Good afternoon, folks. Uh, thank you very much for coming along to today's presentation on the MSc in Applied Behaviour Analysis. I'm uh, Dr. Stephen Gallagher, and I'm the course director for the MSc programme. So today, what I want to do is give a short, short presentation on our course, but I want to begin by just talking about the benefits of postgraduate study at Ulster University, and we'll get into the details then about, about the actual MSc programme in itself. So we have a huge range of uh, master's programmes at, uh, at Ulster University. If you want to check any of those out or any of our upcoming events, please uh, feel free to uh, to, to, to visit our website. And uh, firstly, I'll, I'll just chat to you about the benefits of studying at UU. So we have excellent conversion courses if you want to change careers. So we have quite a number of people, for example, who would do our master's course, where they're maybe coming from a, a nursing background or a teaching background who want to become a behavior analyst. And we certainly have that option there where people can, can, can change their career path with a postgraduate uh, course. It also gives people a competitive edge in employment. Again, as I say, we have a number of professionals who would do our course. So, for example, we have we have nurses who go on to to, to specialise in, in, in behavioural uh, interventions. We have teachers who go on to specialise in special educational needs, uh, and we have we have various other professionals who want to to improve their their, their skill set as they as they go through. Uh, we also have a number of uh, a number of students who come straight from their uh, from their undergraduate degree, and they want to engage in studying behaviour analysis purely because it's something that they're that they're interested in. And we also then have a number of parents, uh, for example, then who will do the course uh, because they want to be able to understand and work with their own child. So the great thing about the course is, or any course that you use, because people are coming from such a, a diverse background, that when we have you guys together in the classroom and you start talking to each other, uh, when we talk about the principles of the of the science, you can sort of see people talking about it from different perspectives. I think that's really important when people want to to, to better themselves and, and, and become, I feel like, experts in this particular field. Uh, the great thing about the course is, and I'll be chatting about this a little bit later on, is that we have uh, an excellent uh, an excellent uh, staff team. So we have uh, those members of staff who come from a very highly sort of theoretical and experimental background. We have other members of staff who come from an extremely rich applied background. And it's bringing those things together gives you the best possible the best possible uh, uh, experience being taught by, by world-leading behaviour analysts who, who, are, who are well respected throughout the world. Uh, we pride ourselves at Ulster University on having a supported study environment. Uh, we very much like to try and have as much face-to-face -face contact with our students as possible. Uh, so we have our seminars, we have our we have our lectures, we have our, our, our practical classes, and we just basically want to spend as much time with you as we possibly can, so that you get as much access to the staff. And that's really important to us at, at Ulster University. Uh, we also strive then to provide postgraduate academic and professional qualifications. If somebody wants to work as a psychologist in Ireland or the UK, you have to have at least a minimum of an MSc qualification. And that's exactly the same with the, with the MSc in behaviour analysis. In order to become board certified, you need to have the MSc. Uh, and obviously that, that's something that we, we continue to pursue uh, in order to allow our students then to go out into the working world with professional qualifications that are recognised. and. We also then have great links with industry bodies and employers. So at the moment, we have quite a few of our students who have gone on to work for the uh, Education Library Boards and Health Trusts in the North, also in the Republic of Ireland as well. And then we have those students who've gone on then to, to work abroad or to set themselves up in, in private practice here uh, in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland as well. So lots of benefits for studying at UU. And if we look at some of the, the facts and figures then that are actually uh, involved with that, we can see that uh, the extra amount of postgraduate uh, that a postgraduate earns compared to a graduate colleague would be eight thousand pounds. So there's quite a significant increase in in your wage packet at the end of of the year, and really that then does amount up to a considerable amount of money. It's two hundred and sixty six thousand pounds extra uh, income with a master's graduation and a degree uh, over the lifetime of employment. So that's quite a that's quite a, a sizable sum when you when we look at it and kind of it's, it's rawness there. We also have twenty percent of our postgraduates uh, basically will will progress faster in their professional settings than than, than people who only have a, a, a graduate degree. So definitely, it, it, it allows people to hit the ground running when they begin their career and maintain that momentum. They do make their way through the ranks, so to speak, at a faster rate than, than somebody with just a graduate degree. Uh, 
When it comes to Ulster University, we're also very, uh, very aware that we want to have nice high employment figures for our students. So we want to make sure that when students uh, leave our courses, that they're, they're, they're fit to, to begin their employment straight away. So 90.7% of UK full-time leavers at postgraduate level right across the UK work in professional occupations compared to only 72.6% for the total uh, UK population for undergraduate le leavers. So you can see automatically then by having that postgraduate qualification, it does improve your opportunities to, to, to get that job that you really want. And all this information is, is, is open for you guys to browse. If you go to the various sources here on the screen, you can check those out and go into the actual specific data when it looks at psychology and all the other, all the other fields that you're, that you're interested in. So, great thing about Ulster University is we have lots and lots of postgraduate uh, uh, qualifications that you can possibly go for. No matter what you're interested in, there'll be something for everybody to come back and, uh, and, and study at a postgraduate level. Uh, at the end of the day, Ulster University is all about the students. We want to make sure that the students are able to get the most out of working with Ulster University as possible. And therefore, what we try and do is we try to make everything as flexible as possible. So we have full-time courses, we have part-time courses, we have distance learning, and really in the last year because of uh, because of COVID, we have really, really kind of improved our, our distance learning, and uh, and that, that's something that we, we, you know, we were very good at initially, but we're much stronger at it now, so that's something that I think has certainly been a benefit. Uh, we also then have flexibility with regard to the level that you want to study at. Some people want to come back and do a, a short course for, for a little certificate, other people want a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, a master's in the arts, or a master's in science. So we have all those different options there. As I say, between the different levels and the different subject matters, there's definitely going to be something for everybody when it comes to, to postgraduate study at Ulster University. And the great thing is, because we're a local university and we have lots and lots of, of links to, to, to local uh, to local uh, industry, but also then to, the, to the, the, the public sector as well. We tend to work with a broad range of industry and public sectors to include professional accreditations where possible. So as I say, with our MSc program, we have the, the, the links to the, to the behavior certification process, and that's something that we're, we're very proud of. But we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, as we go through the various slides. Okay, so when it comes to applications, uh, we have a, an online application system at Ulster University. It doesn't matter what course you're going to be applying to. We have the same online application. If you go to the website there, uh, you can go on to the, to the, to the, to the website and, and fill in your application form. And that comes directly through to our faculty office, which then will come through to me. There's no actual official closing date for most courses. They tend to roll over uh, as, 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 the, as the year goes by. So if you haven't uh, actually uh, enrolled for a course at this particular point in time, don't be worrying. You haven't missed the deadline. You can send that through to the online application system. And as I say, that will come through to me. And then what we can do is we can take a look at that particular, uh, that particular application and we can arrange uh, uh, an interview with the student. So, Courses uh, often are limited with the number of places that they have. So please think about that when you're going to be putting in an application. You want to try and get it in as early as possible to make sure you do secure a place. But as I say, that's not necessarily uh, true in all, in all cases. You certainly can continue to apply throughout the year. You can also apply for multiple courses. You may want to apply for two or three different courses. Just be aware that if you want to do that, you have to have a separate application for each of those courses. Again, they can all be found in the same place. And then make sure that you fully complete the application. Make sure you've ticked all the, all the boxes that, that have to be filled in. And listen, at the end of the day, there's always somebody there to help you. So if you're in doubt about anything, if you're not sure how to fill a particular section of the application form in, contact us and we'll be happy to get back to you and make sure that your application is all sound and ready to, to send in. So, at the end of the day, as I say, don't be worrying. If you're stuck, give us a call and we can help you in any way that we possibly can. When it comes to fees and finance then of the course, what we tend to see is that we have standard price across a lot of our courses, and they usually start from £6,270 uh, for the course. That's beginning in 2021-2022. We do, however, have flexible payment options, and that can be sorted out with the university. You can talk to the fees office about that and they'll advise you on how to actually set up a, a flexible payment system. 
For anybody then who has done their undergraduate degree with Ulster University, we have a 10% alumni discount. So if you've done your, your undergraduate degree with us here at Ulster and you want to come back and do an MSc or an MA, there's a 10% uh, alumni discount. For those maybe who aren't really, uh, haven't come through UU, there is a 5% discount for an upfront payment. So if you pay all your fees in, upfront in one go, we'll give you a 5% discount there. And uh, just to help out those students in here thinking of coming back, uh, there are student loans for up to £5,500 available to help you through, uh, to help you through your, your, your living costs, etc. when you're actually carrying out the course. Again, you know, on, go onto our website, check out the, the, the fees uh, site, and they'll be able to give you all the information about that should you actually require it. So, the MSc in Applied Behaviour Analysis, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about our course now. So, the, the Master's in Applied Behaviour Analysis is basically a, 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 an MSc program. It's part-time over two years. The reason that we have a part-time over two years is, as, a, as I said before, we have a lot of professionals who come and do our course on day release. A lot of teachers, a lot of social workers, a lot of uh, a lot of nurses, mental health nurses. We also then have students coming directly from their from their uh, from their undergraduate degree. So the whole idea then is that at the end of the two year course, you will hopefully be eligible to come to become a board certified behavior analyst if you have fulfilled all the various criteria. And I just want to explain applied behavior analysis really in a, in, a, in a nutshell. A definition of applied behavior analysis is the science in which tactics derive from the principles of behavior are applied systematically to improve socially significant behavior and experimentation is used to identify the variables responsible for behavior change. Now that on the face of it seems like a very simple uh, paragraph, but there's so much in there and it really does uh, if you like, describe our course in an absolute, absolute nutshell. So the first thing is that applied behavior analysis is a science. Okay, so we're going to get you guys and we're going to make sure that you are well grounded in the basic science. Because if we look at, at, at behavior analysis, we see that there are a number of principles. Should that be shaping? Should that be reinforcement? Should that be extinction? Those basic principles have been uh, well validated over many, many years. And what we want to do is we want to teach you those basic principles. Because when it then comes to applying those systematically to individuals, we want to make sure that any piece of behavior that we want to change is going to be socially beneficial or significant to the person in question. So if they're having difficulty doing something that would make their life better, we can teach that. Or if they're engaging in a behavioral excess that's inhibiting their ability to, to live successfully in their environment, we want to help them address that one as well. And we do that again by going back to the basic principles of, of the science. And then because it's a science, we also use experimentation. So we'll put in place an intervention. And what we want to do is we want to see, does our intervention improve the behavior where required? If it does, brilliant, we carry on with what we're doing. If it doesn't, we then go back and we change something. But ideally what we want to do is we want to put in place scientifically validated interventions that help those end users with whom we're actually uh, engaged. So as I say, Seems like a very short uh, paragraph there, but there's so much in that, and we'll tease that out a little bit as I go through the remaining slides. So, the broad aim of the Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis is to give students the opportunity to develop their theoretical and conceptual knowledge in behaviour analysis, to develop skills in behavioural assessment, and acquire the ability to work in partnership with clients where they plan and implement programmes that are aimed at establishing, strengthening, and or weakening targeted behaviours. Before I got the job at Ulster University, I worked in the community for 10 years. And my job was to go into family homes or go into schools or go into hospitals and help identify uh, with individuals the behavioral excesses and deficits in which they were, we were interested in addressing. And then we put programs into place to actually address those. I worked with children maybe as young as two years of age, right up to individual clients who were in their 60s. So it's a, it's, it's a fantastic science for, for basically helping anybody with any sort of age group at all. Now generally the course is designed for professionals who work or intend to work in caring professions. So for example, working with people with autism or other developmental and learning disabilities, or in the area of general behavior management, a lot of emphasis on parent and staff training, community development, and adult mental health. And the programs aim to provide a foundation that contributes to the preparation of candidates interested in applying for the internationally recognized examination 
leading to board certification and behavior analysis. So all the members staff are board certified. We're all board certified to a doctoral level. And we're able then to offer supervision for you guys as you're actually going through the course. But again, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. So the teaching staff, as I mentioned, are uh, of a very high caliber. They're recognized uh, throughout the world as world leading experts. And um, just very quickly, we have Professor Julian Leslie, uh, who's just been recognized for his work by the Association for Behavior Analysis International. He's just received an award for that. Uh, Professor Mickey Keenan, who has received that same award uh, twice uh, for his international, um, his international dissemination of the science of behavior analysis. We have Dr. Clara McDowell then, who was integral for setting up all the behavior analytic schools in the Republic of Ireland a number of years ago. Many of those schools are, are still running, so Clara was at the, at the forefront of actually opening those schools for families in the Republic of Ireland. And then there's myself, Stephen Gallagher, I'm the course director. And as I say, I, have, uh, I, was, I was part of that interna international award with Professor Keenan uh, a number of years ago. I also worked out in the community for a number of years and have been involved in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, interventions and, and parent training as well. So within the, the actual group, we have a great sort of mix of theoretical and applied knowledge, which is going to really help you guys develop a good sound understanding of the, the science of behavior analysis. So the way the course is broken down is that it's taught part time over two years. In the first academic year, you guys will be coming on campus, hopefully, on a Friday. And then year one, semester one, you will be getting taught the basic principles of, of science. So we have scientific principles of behavior analysis with Professor Leslie and the theory and application of behavior analysis with Professor Mickey Keenan. Those are the two modules that you'll have in the first semester of the first year. And then after the Christmas holidays, uh, you'll be coming back then to do semester two. And then semester two, things become a little bit more applied You'll be doing conceptual, legal, and ethical issues with, with Dr. McDowell. You'll be doing a specific autism and behavior analysis module with myself, and also a behavioral assessment and intervention module, again, with, with Dr. McDowell. And it's really important the way we have the course designed, because what we want to do is we want to make sure that you have a nice sound uh, grounding in the basic science. And then once you have that nice sound basic understanding of the science, then you can relate that directly to the applied things that myself and Claire are going to be talking about and it will make it a lot more uh, understandable to you. So there's a really a lot of thought has gone into how we actually design the course. That's your first academic year and then when you return in the second academic year in the first semester it's then taught on a Thursday and then the th on the Thursday then you have a, a of uh, research methods and advanced techniques by myself and then we'll also have uh, in the afternoon getting you prepared for your placement and your dissertation. The rest of the course then is spent on gathering your data together for your placement report and also for carrying out your, your MSc thesis for your dissertation. And that really then is, is, is the structure of the course over the two years. So what you will find as we go through the course over the two years is that we very much want to get you guys to think like scientists. We want to develop a person-centered and holistic perspective of behavior, and we want to do that with evidence-based practice. So it doesn't matter if you're working in a home program with a family. It doesn't matter if you're doing something for your placement report. It doesn't matter if you're doing your dissertation. You will follow this scientific model and what it is that you're actually doing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select the behavior to be analyzed. With the client, what are the things that they want to work on? What do they want to, 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 to do more of? What do they want to do less of? If the client can speak for themselves, that's fantastic. If for whatever reason they can't advocate for themselves, we'll certainly then ask a family member to do that for them. But at the end of the day, we certainly try and have everything driven through the client themselves to make sure that they're actually getting the benefit out of the program that's going to be important to them. So what we do with that initial assessment is we try and get as much information about the client as possible with direct and indirect um, uh, assessments of their behavior. We want to establish priorities, goals, and objectives. What are the things that we can do that are going to have the biggest impact on you or your family? Those are the things that we want to involve them in. And then lastly, we want to analyze the system. So for example, if it's a single parent with three children, what kind of intervention can we realistically put in in that situation versus maybe 
uh, a stay-at-home mom with only one child on the autism spectrum. Those two situations are very different. Therefore, we have to sort of think about it in that holistic way. And then what we want to do is we want to measure the behavior because what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to see does our intervention have the, the, the effect that we want it to. If we want to increase a behavior, does that occur? If we want to decrease a behavior, does that occur? So we'll measure the behavior. It could be the, the frequency of the behavior. It could be the duration of the behavior. And then what we'll do is we'll basically then have our baseline. So this is where the behavior is at the moment. What's that going to look like when we put our intervention into place? And the great thing about a behavioral analytic approach is that we have a huge number of different treatment strategies. We have lots of different strategies that allow us to, to increase behavior, and we have lots of different strategies that allow us to decrease behavior. So again, in conjunction with the family, what we'll do is we'll give them maybe three or four different, uh, different strategies that we can put in place, and we'll discuss with them as a family, which one do you think you'd be more comfortable with? Which, which one do you think you're going to be able to do as a family? And we'll then put that uh, intervention into place. And we'll monitor the effects. We'll be able to see then, is the behavior improving when we want it to, or is it not improving when, or is it, uh, is it, is it decreasing when we want it to? If it's not, we then have to change something. And then lastly, we want to evaluate the effects of the treatment. We want to make sure that the person isn't on an intervention ad infinitum. Any intervention, we want to make sure that that intervention actually finishes. We want to make sure that the behavior is maintained by the natural contingencies. So for example, when I begin an intervention with a child, for example, with poor social skills, we may have to have, for example, a token board. So when the child initiates play with a peer, we'll give them a token for their token board. But eventually we want the natural contingencies to take over. And by that, we mean then that the child goes and asks a classmate to play, and then they go off and play together. And that's what maintains the behavior over time. We no longer need to extrinsically reinforce that. So it's really important that we leave the person in a situation where their behavior is being maintained by the natural contingencies. And really, at the end of the day, as I say, yes, there's an awful lot in this quite simple and straightforward diagram. But the whole point of the MSC program is that we talk you through this entire uh, process and you then become expert in that by the end of the course. This is what you'll be doing as a behavior analyst when you're working in your in your, your future career. Now, when the MSC program first began, it was very much related to, to autism spectrum disorder, but just to putting up this slide, this is from the Association for Behavior Analysis International, and it looks at the special interest groups which are part of, of, of ABAI. And as you can see, we have uh, a whole range of different things uh, on which behavior analysts work. So for example, acceptance and commitment uh, therapy or training is to do with, uh, with, with depression and anxiety and a lot of kind of so-called sort of cognitive behaviors. And we have, uh, we have a good rich history of, of researchers involved in that uh, among our staff. Uh, addiction, uh, should it be alcohol or substance abuse? Uh, is another field that we, we were involved in. In fact, one of our master's students went to Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore and worked in the Kennedy Krieger Center for substance abuse using behavior analysis. And uh, they did their placement year there and, and had a great time. So we're hoping to, to expand on that. Obviously, then we have, we have ASD. Uh, this is a little side project I'm involved in, behavior analysis and selection of robotics. We're actually looking at behavior analysis and, and artificial intelligence. We then have health and sport and fitness. Uh, behavioral gerontology is working with uh, using behavior analysis. Uh, we have a number of links with the Royal Victoria Hospital working with consultant pediatricians uh, looking at behavioral medicine. So how can we have behavior analysis uh, complementing the medical approach? We also then have uh, a crime, clinical behavior analysis, neuroscience, all sorts of interesting things going on there. My, my recommendation would be go on to the Association for Behavior Analysis International website and look at all the different areas in which behavior analysts are, are, are working. So the great thing then is it's an MSc in behavior analysis. When you become board certified, you're board certified as a behavior analyst, and you can go on then and work in any of these particular fields. So it certainly is a, a very exciting opportunity if anybody wants to get involved from, from that perspective. As I say, our course is a, is a verified course sequence of the Behavior Analyst Certification Board. That basically means then that if you get a qualification as a board certified behavior analyst here in Northern Ireland, you can then have that qualification recognized around the world. 
So at this particular point in time, just off the top of my head, we have students who've completed our uh, course. They're working in Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Great Britain. They're working through uh, the European Union. They're also working in the United States, in Canada, in New Zealand, in Australia, in the United Arab Emirates, and, uh, and also China and India. So a huge number of our students have gone off to, to work around the world, as well as working more locally as well. So we follow the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the content for the BACB. We're currently in the fourth edition, and I've, I'll not rush you guys through it now, but you can sort of see it, it, it relates to the number of hours of each area that we have to teach. And currently, we have to, to have to cover 270 classroom hours. Uh, that's going to increase to 315 hours, but we've already got the paperwork sorted out that we can move from one to the other. The whole point being that when you complete our course, you will have completed all the classroom uh, requirements that you need in order to become to become board certified. So it's important that that all master's courses in behavior analysis follow this the, the, this classroom breakdown. When it comes to the uh, the placement element of the of the, uh, the, the, the BACB qualification. At the moment, you're required to have 1,500 practice hours, 5% of which need to be supervised, which means 75 hours supervised by one of the members of staff that I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the, of the, the presentation. That's about to, to increase to, to 2,000 hours, which will require 100 hours of supervision. So we try as best as we possibly can to try and get you guys as much of that supervision as, as possible so that you're able to, to, to be ready to set the BACB exam at the end of the, at the, end of the session. Uh, we're also very excited that since 2006, we've also developed a relationship with the New England Center for Children in Boston. This is a world leading center for children and young adults with ASD. And each year we send somewhere in the region six to nine of our students to, to the New England Center for a year. And when they're there, they work on their dissertation on their placement report in this world leading center. They they rack up uh, you know the, the, their placement hours for BACB accreditation, and it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for students. In fact, we have a number of students then who have returned to the New England Center for careers there. We also have had a number of students who work in one of their London outreach centers. Uh, we have students who go there every year, and then we also have students who go to the New England Center for Children's uh, Center. Uh, in Abu Dhabi and at the minute I think we have about six or seven of our students there as well so if anybody wants to, to, to become involved in a, in a career through the New England Centre then obviously this is something that we, we, we would certainly promote. Now I should point out that whilst Ulster University will do everything we can and the New England Centre for Children will do everything we can, we obviously can't guarantee that, that, that you're going to get a visa so what I would say would be certainly if you're interested in doing the, the, the years placement at the New England Centre we will that we possibly can, just in case there are visas, then obviously have a plan B as well. Now, we, 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 we manage them through COVID-19 to have our students going as normal. But again, you know, in, in this world where things fluctuate and change, we want to make sure that you also have a plan B there as well. But we'll certainly do everything we can to try and help to get you out to the New England Centre uh, in the future as well. So when you finish the two-year course, you should have your 1,500 practice hours, your 75 hours of supervision, all your classroom hours. So you'll have your MSc qualification, and then that means you will be eligible to set the BACB exam. And once you set the BACB exam and pass that, you're officially a board certified behavior analyst. That qualification has to be renewed annually, but you also have to recertify every two years with 32 continuing education credits or continual, continuous professional development. We do a lot of courses at Ulster University for our students to come back and get their CPD hours and their CEU hours as well. So that's something that we all have to do. As I say, I'm board certified. I have to collect my 32 CEUs uh, as well. So it's, it's a great way just to ensure that once you've qualified, that you stay up to speed with all the various uh, all the various uh, uh, improvements and, and, and developments that have been made in the actual science. Now, you may be aware that uh, the Behavior Analyst Certification Board in 2025 is going to stop certifying students from overseas. So they will only be certifying students from the United States and Canada. So what we're busy doing at the moment in the UK and Ireland is that we're busy having Behavior Analysts recognized in the UK as an individual 
uh, career. And we're also having behavioral psychologists recognized by the Psychological Society of Ireland. What we're planning on doing is we're planning that anybody who has become board certified through the BACB will automatically become grandfathered onto one of these new schemes. So if you're living in the UK and you're board certified, you'll automatically be recognized with the new UK qualification. If you're from the Republic of Ireland and you're board certified, you will automatically be recognized with the qualification from the Psychological Society of Ireland. So again, we're certainly recommending that our students continue to become board certified and then they can automatically grandfather over to the new system. It's a good thing in the long run because it's going to allow us to have much more control over what it means to us from a professional point of view that we can guide our own profession in the UK and guide our own profession in Ireland as well. So we're in a bit of a, a bit of a changeover period, but we've designed the courses in such a way that there should be a, a seamless transition for anybody who, who's done the course and become certified. Okay, I've mentioned COVID-19 and the impact that that has. Obviously at Ulster University, we're, we're, we're trying to pre prepare, I should say, for the 2021-2022 academic year. And we're currently making preparations to welcome new students for the academic year, which means hopefully we're planning to have you guys on campus. That would be, that, that, that's our goal at the moment. However, I should point out a bit of a caveat that we will do that safely and in line with government guidance. As things stand at the moment, that's what we want to do. Fingers crossed there won't be any changes where, where that's maybe going to have to change. But needless to say, if there are any changes, we'll certainly let you know as soon as possible. But as things stand at the moment, we're hopefully having you guys on campus come, come September. We actually have a dedicated page to coronavirus at Ulster University. I've got the address here, ulster.ac.uk, coronavirus. If you go onto that web page on a regular enough basis, you'll sort of see exactly what the most up-to-date uh, information is about COVID and about, about coronavirus. So you can keep an eye on that. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions or you maybe want to talk about postgraduate study or doing the MSc, this is my email address, sm.gallagher at ulster.ac.uk, and this is my phone, 701-24292. You can get in contact with me, and I can give you whatever information or clarification you possibly need.